you're listening to Orbiting Punk. This is Guilt, a Florida post-hardcore band. I was able to catch up with them at their show in New Orleans, in front of Gasa Gasa in their tour van. So if there's a few little weird audio glitches or anything like that, um, just forgive me. <laughs> I tried to make it as good as I could. But thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy. All right, so we got a recording. Yeah, I'm in the van with Guilt. Uh, if you guys would, just introduce yourself and uh, we'll get started. Cool. Um, I'm Ash okay. and uh, doing vocals for Guilt for a few nights now. Mm-hmm. My voice is uh, getting there. It's getting there. It's prime. It's prime. It's prime. Oh my God, I'm so like strange. <laughs> yeah. It's probably not the best thing to ask you to do a podcast right before a gig. Oh no, listen. Um, <laughs> we got to do vocal warm-ups anyhow. Yeah. Um, I'm Tyler. I, it's my job to remind Ash to do vocal warm-ups. I, I used to be the singer, and it didn't go too well, so uh, Ash replaced me. I used to be the drummer, so to make you know all that feel better is that I wasn't really good at that. That didn't go too well, so now <laughs> we were both Natalie in this band me. and not doing our job perfectly, so we replaced ourselves with better people. Yeah, I, I thought that was interesting. So I noticed Tilly's not around anymore, right? Yeah. Tilly, yeah, she's after, moved on. To... After like five years, Tilly dropped out, but it was like basically our method since you know we're poor kids families do not have industry connections from florida the only thing we had was like a van so it was always just like let's get in the van and go on tour and that was our whole thing you know like we weren't good at the internet so we weren't popular online and it was just like that's how we met everybody and it's been a lot it's been a lot of time of that until he's made a lot of sacrifices like moving up to uh st augustine and jacksonville to make like traveling easier and you know, lost wages and stuff is rough. So she's just like, I can't be on this tour schedule anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's completely understandable. Like, we haven't announced what we're doing yet, but I, it's a lot of touring this yeah. year. There's there, there's a lot more that's about to happen. Yeah, and uh, she also has her guitar teaching business in Jacksonville that she's really, like, started yeah, up. Yeah, she's pushing that hard. Yeah, and she started it up last year, I think, and has been really grinding at that. And she's like, I kind of prefer to just... You know, really keep at that business, and uh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You know, it's funny you guys mentioned that you're not that great as an online presence because I, I honestly think you guys have a pretty awesome online presence. Like Tyler, you're always posting on Facebook and stuff, especially I, political things, which I, I guess okay. maybe not everyone sees. <laughs> but Ash, you got the TikTok thing, I get the, so it's I get like the TikTok <laughs> cover all the bases: the politics and TikTok. That's it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know like how deep we want to get with this. We were just having a whole big, like debate about it last night, but um, I actually kind of quit doing facebook because uh during the trump era like whenever like you know people don't really care about things that are going well on the internet they want drama so it's like you can only post about your band so many times and then people want to hear you talk about something controversial so like politics was that for me and since biden's been in office i mean i'm i'm not pro biden i would be posting like can i curse on this yeah, it's fine. I'd be like, fuck Joe Biden. Like, I'd be like, <laughs> don't say let's go Brandon. Just say fuck Joe Biden. I hope the man falls down some stairs. But, like, uh, it didn't work. And it was confusing. And you know, I don't want to, like, fully lean into, like, the right-wing conspiracy that media is all, like, lefty censorship stuff. But it, it definitely seems like the algorithm is not favoring talking about politics right now. And uh, so until he left, there was a, a vacuum and like, who was running the Twitter? So now I'm running the Twitter because on Twitter, you just be like, pee pee poo poo <laughs> and, and it works out. <laughs> Our manager is trying to coach me. He's like, stop saying so many words. Just type pee pee poo poo. And I'm like, no, but like, what do you mean? And she's like, literally. <laughs> <laughs> it's what people like. Let me show you examples. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's social media is at a really interesting spot right now. But specifically, Facebook is like rough because, uh, you know, uh, Gen Z isn't on it. Like, millennials were right. pretending to be on it because they're parents, you know? So it's like, I have a Facebook and I'll post occasionally, so my parents are like, oh, there's Tyler, and they don't go looking for me elsewhere on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, Gen Z doesn't even pretend. Yeah. Or, or especially, like, Gen Alpha or whatever is next. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. They, they have, like, have that, 600 yeah. fake Instagrams, but they don't have a Facebook. So one, yeah. Yeah, we're, social media is at a weird place, TLDR. Sorry for the long tangent on that. <laughs> no. I just, I'm really into uh, strategizing social media yeah. stuff. That's cool, and I, I think you guys do a good job of it. Um, like, I, your Twitter is pretty awesome, and 
your Instagram also has a lot of cool stuff on it. And then I think the TikTok thing's interesting. So I wanted yeah. you to maybe mention something about that. Like, yeah, like, uh, especially since it was like, we really, we did the Snipfest video in early 2021. Yeah. And then we were like, okay, how do we promote this? And how do we get it out there? And we, like, first dipped our toes in posting more on TikTok. Um, we did some, like, group videos with everyone. And then when we got our manager, Maya, uh, Maya and I worked really hard on creating, like, a schedule and, like, trying to find, like, what kind of content we want to make through TikTok. That's still talking about the band and still um, got a lot of funny, quirky, quippy stuff in there. Um, so we made a... I, was really grinding to make a lot of videos and some of them didn't do as well as others, but it was more so just trying to find what people wanted to hear from us. And I think I've talked about like top five venues or top five worst or best venues we played oh, on tour yeah, like 10,000 <laughs> times. I'm pretty sure everyone's like, yeah, we get it. You really, really love these venues or you really didn't like this venue. Yeah, um, I remember seeing like Masquerade on that list and stuff like that. Right? I will forever love having fun with Masquerade. Shit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it was really nice. We were a bunch of like babies on the stage, and then we played Shed like as a cover from Tidal Fight, and everyone was like, "What the fuck?" And uh, that <laughs> was really fun. There. The safe word about how like there's an age thing where it's like some bands are like, "Oh, I remember the old Masquerade," and it's like. If you do, then you're old. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I remember like attending the, the old masquerade. Yeah, 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 the whole thing just. But uh, yeah, we played the new masquerade, but it, it still rips. Yeah, no, it's still. It's rips. an abandoned like neo mall. Or something. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. Three yeah. floors. It's insane. Yeah. It's, it's so there's not a venue like that, yeah. that I've ever been to. And um, they all got cool names: Heaven, Hell, and Purgatory. They also have a pretty cool TikTok. Yeah, but nice. <laughs> you know if you've ever checked that out but I, I think it's cool that you guys are doing that kind of thing because you know it's like sure maybe you're not gen z I, you guys are like borderline gen z right i i am I'm token millennial in the band yeah. oh, okay everyone else <laughs> is the token millennial i am pretty much gen z unfortunately it makes me feel like i just don't not to be like i don't fit in with gen z <laughs> but like i don't feel like i do to an extent i do that's, quote tiktok audios right? that's how it was when back when I was your age. <laughs> no, but like, there was a massive media smear campaign against millennials. Like, I don't want to be like, we were the first generation that was like, like hated to that degree, but like, I think we were the first uh, like youth generation that was during that level of media spearheading where like the, the economy was going bad. It was like, every day it was like, millennials are ruining this, millennials are ruining that, millennials are whining, millennials are stupid babies. They liked avocado on their toast. Yeah. <laughs> and like the media still hasn't caught up to being like, like Gen Z people are in their mid twenties. Like millennials are in their like mid thirties. We're not like ruining anything anymore. We just don't own houses. <laughs> That's it. But like, I think you're in that, cro you know, you're in the crosshairs now where it's like, it's, it's shameful to be the young generation or not like, not like young, but like the, the mid twenties generation. Cause you're faulted for everything. And the media is going to like play you off as like, Brats. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Funny, I'm wearing a brats hoodie. Um, <laughs> no, but like, yeah, it's it's just weird because like, I'm my I have younger brothers who are like the generation alpha, and like I know what that addiction to social media already at such a young age looks like, and like you know people are like, oh my god, so is Gen Z, and like the next generation, and blah, 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 like the phones are consuming, and it's like. Yeah, because the phone, you guys, it's like you have pushed phones to be the only method of like to use stuff, and you have made it so that things are inaccessible if you don't have a phone. So it's like, yeah, you kind of put this here. Why are you blaming us for doing the thing you made? Right, exactly. It, it's yeah. like, I, I remember, because I was born in 97, and mm -hmm. so like that's like right in the in between. Uh, <laughs> oh. Uh, just Domino's, Domino's yelling is, at people. <laughs> Domino's is a little upset at the goth kids. Um, <laughs> well, uh, anyways. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, generation's weird, yeah. whatever. Uh, not fitting in. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I really wanted to talk to you about. <laughs> um, this is was, the most pop punk interview. <laughs> <laughs> it's like pizza <laughs> outside the venue. It's all jank as hell. We're in the van. Um, but. Uh, with the, the, the whole lineup change, I who is now playing everything? Okay, so <laughs> uh, we don't have an official bass player. Um, we have an official drummer, Allie. Um, she recorded on 
when is this coming out? Uh, probably within the next week, I would hope. So on something we're doing. <laughs> She um, recorded on an EP we put out last oh, yeah, year. She, she, she did. Drums for long time she did the drums for a long time yeah, yeah, coming, yeah, and that was. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah that was our so first like introduction with like yeah. really having her being like in our setting and in our band and everything. Um, so yeah, so Allie's doing drums. Yeah, okay. sure. Uh, yeah. All right, I'm back on. So so okay, so Allie's doing drums and. Uh, we had a session basis lined up for this run, and then it just didn't work out last minute. So we have Griffin coming in, um, who's in like a million other bands, but has been friends with us for a long time. Um, Griffin was supposed to be doing lead to replace Tilly, and just since we lost our bassist last minute, we're like, well, we can't. We could play without a lead guitar. We can't play without bass. So Griffin's playing bass on the, on this run just to be a super good sport, and also because Griffin's a guitar wizard and can learn parts in like five seconds. Yeah, so, that's yeah. who's in it right now. And so, why the the vocal change? So, <laughs> <laughs> Ash made a fuck you walk. I did. We um, were touring in 2019, <laughs> and it was like my first big tour, and I was still doing drums at the time. And I threw out my shoulder pretty bad. It was like around the time we played Ash a, tore a ligament. I tore, yeah. Yeah, they're Ooh. definitely underplaying this story. Yeah, I, Ash wrecked themselves. I went to the doctor, and they were like, "We can maybe fix this for you and do some more diagnostics because it is pretty fucked up." But money, and I was yeah. like, "But I don't got that money." Right. But <laughs> um, anyhow, I uh, yeah, I, I I I tore a ligament in my shoulder, and it was around the time we actually went and played at Mexico, a festival in Mexico. And then we came back, and that's when I, that was like the moment when like my shoulder just like, it felt like it was like separating. Um, and we played a few shows like without me drumming, and Tyler was drumming. I was drumming and, and doing singing. vocals because I am absolutely on here. <laughs> and you will do literally <laughs> anything. so hard. Yeah, yeah. It was very empowering. Like, I don't think I did a good job, but people were like impressed. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't was. Know. I think it was, it was definitely very much so saved that time because like I was just writhing in pain watching yeah, them play. Yeah, spending every day just like laying like in the car crying. It was yeah, bad. it was it was pretty bad. And then when I kind of felt like I was getting better, um, it was interesting. We played a show in Stephenville, Texas, and there was someone there who's like, "I'm a nurse." actually and they were like oh, feeling yeah. my shoulder and like putting like a cold compress on there and i was using yeah, a lot of tens it up. Yeah. yeah yeah they were it was very interesting i started feeling a little bit better um and i was like okay i want to still contribute because that was like a really thing i was like i'm here on this tour and i want to help in some way and so i actually did a few songs like i fronted a few songs and um i guess from there we were like oh ash is clearly very comfortable Fronting. You used to do backing yeah. vocals too, right? Um, I used to just scream yeah, from behind the drum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would just, I'd just be yelling back there. People after the set would be like, yo, you're so emotional when you play. And I was like, I know, I got a lot of shit I'm holding. Um, <laughs> when my, like, I was playing drums, but like the others in the band, like after like one or two shows, they were like, Tyler, you don't understand. Like Ash is on another level with this. And then eventually when we got back, I was like, all right, let me hear it. And then I was like, oh. I could practice really hard and I'm not going to be able to do that. You know, like it, it was pretty clear that it's just ashes. That's, the, that's their skill. You know, yeah. like we can all play every instrument kind of passively. We're all musicians, but like, I feel like most people have like, they're like calling their home. Thing yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah it was sense. just coincidence. So yeah, that, that's pretty much. And then we made the switch. I think we put out, um, a single black and blue. I was just yeah, doing heavy that vocals. During, um, the like BLM protest stuff. Yeah, so that was like our first dipping our toes in the water of changing the vocal lineup. Yeah, it's so, yeah. cool. It, it, you know, I think um, it seems intentional almost. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I, I, it's kind of cool to hear the story that it's almost like a you know you had to sub you in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it, it's like you have a really nice voice, and it seems like Thank it's you. like you're almost like classically trained. Um, you sound like, I know this probably sounds dumb, but you sound like Haley Williams, but so, not like, like the actual. <laughs> so here's the thing. Here's the thing is the that comparison everyone makes. I know, I know. But also like, I know that some people are like, oh, I don't like, cause I get that. Like some people are like, don't say I sound like Haley Williams, but I'm like, I actually really looked at what Haley Williams was doing and was like, I want to do that. So. It, yeah, it, yeah, it's gonna. It shows in my vocals. I can't remember someone. It's like I know she was uh, like a, a 
church choir person or something, yeah, right? Yeah, so I, I, I didn't go to church when I was younger, but I did community theater, so it's like almost the same thing. Cool. Um, yeah. You know. <laughs> Basically. The, I mean, I guess they're both very sexual places. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. You would not believe the amount of people Fair. in theater who just can't, just, just need to oh, go touch some grass. But, um, yeah, no, like, uh, I was a theater kid, and I did, like, community theater, and then musicals that, that my school were doing um barely ever got any lead roles but i really 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 tried every day to like keep improving myself um and to keep trying to be at the level where they would maybe give me a lead role once or something but uh you know that's kind of where i got a lot of my practice from i also was in my school's choir so i like the school had like beginning intermediate level and then like the chambers level which is like the I don't even know if I would call it expert, but then I got into chambers, so that was like where I got a lot You're of. You're just like, holding out on us all that time. You're like, I'm a drummer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, I thought that's what I was. I was having an identity crisis. <laughs> I remember watching you guys at the Vod Off the DIY House, and you guys are just like always so full of energy, like everyone in the group. Um, okay, so I'm. I don't want to be like self-deprecating. Yeah. But like, I'm going to be. I'm not a very good musician. Like I, I like when I was like learning guitar, it wasn't like like okay, so like my chemical romance. I wasn't looking at Ray. I was looking at Frank, who's just a rhythm guitar player, you know. And it's like I say, just like it's bad, but that's like the meat and potatoes of music. It's not flashy, but it lets you move around a lot, and it lets you add that like energy to it. And that's always what I was interested in. And like when Guilt started, uh, Tilly and I were completely just exploring genres and like learning about music and stuff like Tilly's obviously obvi always been like a guitar like wizard but uh like all the agreement we had with people coming in was like you don't necessarily have to always be playing the right notes the more you mess up the more you thrash around like it needs to be a performance and that's always been like our guiding principle and that's why we we like played with a bunch of punk bands even though we like aren't necessarily a punk band i think people think of us that way because we are very like yeah i'll kick my guitar pedal off the stage i'll like roll around <laughs> on the, last night we were playing to like a small room and i jumped off like a five foot stage in the dark and i couldn't see and i rolled my foot and i just like thrashed around on the floor and i was like ah! and then, like in my mind i was like oh no i've messed up and i couldn't play guitar and like i was limping i was like limp cool <laughs> and, so cool. and then afterwards everyone's like you guys are so crazy and i was like yeah hell yeah man. yeah <laughs> i'm in so much pain but you, yeah. you wake up the next morning like what am uh, yeah. i doing i am not five years old i can't just be tumbling around yeah, on the you stage. Hear my dad, you're, like, you're not 17 anymore and i'm like oh i'm so 30 <laughs> but um i mean that's that's always been our thing is like i want to put on a show i i mean i think emo is emotional lyrically usually and the vocal delivery is nice and sad but when it gets thrashy i want it to be emotional in that way as well and i think a lot of emo bands are really boring like they just stand there a lot of them yeah yeah <laughs> especially like the more mathier ones yeah like... which i get when you're actually trying to play guitar really intricately it's mm -hmm. hard and i've always felt bad for uh tilly and whoever comes in and is gonna have to play these lead guitar parts because it's like you really got to look at what you're doing and like, I just don't, you know, I'm playing power chords, which means there is a higher expectation for me to be doing something interesting with my body. This is, it's cool. I, uh, <laughs> 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 this is um, yeah, you didn't think all this was purposeful. It is. We talked about it. <laughs> no, it's cool. Like I, I didn't expect to have all that detail to it, but I, I think that it, it, it comes clear through y'all's performances. Um, I wanted to, I totally forgot to do this at the beginning, I wanted to give y'all some stuff. Uh, Mardi Gras just happened, and I want to ask, have you guys been to New Orleans before? Y'all played yeah. the, the We played the goat, goat last right? year. Yeah. What did y'all think of the goat? Um, I had a crazy experience, but go ahead, Ash. You, what, was, it, was I there for this crazy experience? All right. So, my old, my first band. The first time we came to New Orleans, um, oh yeah, we were walking like downtown, and we stopped in an art gallery, and there was a kid working there, and this kid was like 15, 16, like, like super young, like just barely like able to even work at a place, <laughs> and um, but the kid had like cool, colorful hair, makeup, facial piercings, and we just started shooting the shit, and we said that we were playing a show, and they're like, oh, like it, I think it was, 
I don't remember what venue it was, but they were like, it's 21 and up, I can't go, but you can come crash at my house. And so we crashed at her house, and it was like her and her boyfriend, and it was the first time I'd ever been in like a shotgun style house. And they had some dogs, and she had a, I, I don't want to like out somebody, you know, here, I don't want to like <laughs> name drop. She had an interesting name, to say the yeah. least. So, you know, four or five years later on this trip, we came and we played the goat. She was our bartender. And I walked in and I was like, name? <laughs> and, and then she was like, who are you? And I was like, I have met your dogs before. <laughs> and like, I, as a band person, usually people walk up to you and are like, hey, Tyler, remember me? And I, I just have to pretend that I do because, you know, you meet so many people. Mm-hmm. But this was like one of the first times it was the opposite where like this person had made such an impression on me. And like my first experience in New Orleans put such an impression on me. And I was just one of many people they've met. And I was just like, wow. But like, what's the chances? It's such a small town. It had been five years. That's pretty dope. Pretty yeah. Awesome. But they were like super cool. It's like, like, like a Pokemon. I met them as like a kid and now they're like a final evolution goth, <laughs> like, like so many more piercings and tattoos and like working as a bartender at the goth bar. <laughs> at the goth bar. <laughs> like, go pentagram on the ceiling. No, for real. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love that place. We played there with, um, on the last trip with Bad Misters, but we played there before with, uh, a why, why is this escaping me? What's Frankie's band's name? Ghouls. Ghouls. You know Ghouls. It's like G-O-O-L-S. No, it's, is it? I don't know. I, I think maybe I've actually seen them on some They're films, like, but they're, I've never really listened to them. I mean, obviously there's music happening. They're a band. But like, if you think we're crazy, they're like, what I think of like Nirvana, where it's like it's not just that they're thrashing around; they're also like avant-garde artsy. Like the the first time we played with them, this was way pre-COVID. So the story's gonna sound weird, but uh, they pulled out a peach, and they had everyone in the audience take a bite out of it, <laughs> and, and then they just had like a salsa breakdown, and it was just like so this strange. Very, yeah, they're <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and now it's like I could never, but uh, yeah, it's. New Orleans has always been weird and cool. There is a lot of weirdness here. And, like, yeah. the punk scene here is very weird. Like, there's a big grindcore scene, which is sort of interesting. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, but... <laughs> no, I mean, like, like in Jacksonville, it feels very, uh, like, disparate. Like, he- like heavy, a.k.a., like, grindcore or, like, extreme metal and stuff seems very separate from, like, hardcore is very separate from, like, emo, indie stuff. Whereas, like, a lot of very other separate. places, like... <laughs> heavy can go under one roof you know i I think that's really cool like ghouls can also book us shows with like super like deafy bands yeah that's sort of the interesting thing i've noticed about new orleans too is like sometimes you'll have sort of like stacked lineups of like the same genre but you'll have like a a mix of sort of like blackened uh you know crust band yeah (laughs) like you'll have uh, the the grindcore shit, and then you have like some goofy indie pop punk kids from Metairie, you know, it's yeah. just, like, weird stuff like that. But um, have you guys ever been for Mardi Gras? So uh-huh. we were <laughs> here for Mardi Gras. We were in Mobile. Okay, yeah, and we're, yeah, we're and I had a, we have a long history of that too. Yeah, I was like, I I had an interesting time because <clears throat> walking through the crowds was a a little. I was a little scared, um, but I do have so many Mardi Gras bead necklaces, but I had so many from that tour and they're all gone. I'm like, I had like 20 at least. Yeah, they, they collected a lot. We well, just picked them up off the ground. I have some if y'all want some. Oh my God. Yeah. Yes. So I, brought, I hope I brought enough for the whole band. Oh, um, listen, it's so not. I will. Two different colors. I brought them. I We're just know. recording audio yeah. so we can pretend that I showed you something if you ah, want. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> it's it's gonna... not real. And I've got more. So, I love uh, you. There's just so many. You know? Thank you. I didn't know how many people to like expect to be. Yeah, we, we always have a rotating lineup. So, <laughs> I wasn't sure if have... it was going to be like partners or yeah. what. You know, it's... greater than or equal to four members. <laughs> so, so, I just dope. brought a Thank bunch. You. I don't know. You could throw them on trees if you want. No. I thought I'd give them to you. I love it. So, Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. Like, Absolutely. I'm doing my little nard work. I, I am <laughs> not at all I have relevant things. to you. No, listen, I'm keeping them all for myself. No one's getting them. Yeah, I noticed you took those all away from me, but that's okay. I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the rattling would probably mess up a lot of the audience. That's oh. fine. 
<laughs> you do a noise set in the middle part. of the show. Uh, ask the uh, sound guy to turn the, the reverb on the mic all the way up and just give the... Like, <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. So, oh, that, that reminds me. So, um, I wanted to ask a little bit about sort of, you know, you guys have a lot of plans of touring and everything going on. Uh, how's this tour going? One, you just started, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> this tour, it is uh, really, really eye-opening. For, I mean, me personally, but we, we've had a lot of conversations. Like, this is our first time doing a support run. Like, um, our whole, like I said, our whole gimmick before was, like, get in the van and go and, and book DIY. We booked all of our own shows ourselves uh, to the point where our band members became moderators of DIY tour posting because they're like, you're, you're here enough, you know? Uh, I'm some money back to your social media band. Yeah, you know yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but like, uh, we, we did all of that and it was always like when bands would, I want, at me as a booker, uh, when bands would come to my town as, a, as like a multi-band package and it's like two bands from the same town and they're both from, like, I don't know, like, bumfuck Utah. Mm-hmm. Like, you're just taking one slot away that I could have used for a local, and you're cutting your money in half. Like, I never understood the premise. So we never went out with other bands. And then um, in December, we went out with Amygdala. That was our first time, like, with, like, a peer band. And they booked a bunch of shows for us in Texas because that's their home state. And we were like, oh, this actually rules. Like, you know, like, doing a run with people in an area that they orbit. And then we had this offer from Sarah and the Safe Word, and it's like, oh, this is totally the next level of, like, new for us because we've never done support. And uh, I have a bunch of, like, psychological baggage about, like, not deserving things. Like, we don't even really ask for guarantees because I'm like, we don't deserve it because like, the crowd isn't coming exclusively for us. And so I was like, yo, I don't, I don't know how to be a support act. Like, how, how many people do we need to be able to bring to justify this? And, the, and Sarah was like, you know, we just want to hang out with you. Like, we yeah. like your band. I'm, I'm going to say that, that this, since this is our first support run, I was very excited <clears throat> that it was there in the safe word because, like, they have such killer music. But also, meeting them, like, as people, they are so, so cool. And every night after the show, all four of us are just, like, driving to wherever we're staying, just gushing about there in the safe word and about how yeah. much, like, we're just, like, love them so much they're so cool <laughs> but um we uh we've been like trying to like hang out with them but for some reason every time we drive to the next city it ends up being like a 10 hour drive somehow even though it'll be like two hours it's just like all of a sudden it was supposed to be a five hour drive and it ended up being eight we made plans to hang out in new orleans and it's just like so can you hang out tomorrow we're gonna try to definitely do that tomorrow because it's also a nine hour drive tomorrow for real for real because we're yeah. going which to... means it's gonna be like a 12 hour drive. so but um we are definitely but we've hung out with them after every show at least while we're packing up and it's just been so nice like they're literally the sweetest people yeah. and um they've been very like helpful for us and we've tried you know to do whatever we can to help them as well and it's just it's been such good vibes the vibes have been amazing that's awesome i know you guys also have uh you had the covid cancellation with mannequin pussy right but that it's still rescheduled. happening right yeah mm-hmm. and so it almost seems like this is almost like a practice run for you guys as a supporting fan. well mannequin was actually going to be a practice run for griffin coming in that's uh yeah because like it was only three days so it was like our first time you know as a support run tilly it was gonna be tilly's last run it was a big celebration with tilly because it was our biggest thing and uh, so now it's like we're kind of already doing the support thing, like feet into the pool, you know, before mannequin. So it's because I mean, after doing this, it's gonna be like oh, three days. Like we're not even gonna get to hang out that much. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. But uh, it's yeah, both of those situations are really interesting. Like during 2020, like like we were a touring band and we didn't know what to do, so we got a manager and we started thinking about industry stuff because it's like, what do you do with all this free time? And um, a lot of the stuff we're doing now is like conversations we were having back then. It's like, let's try doing these things that we don't usually do. Let's try going to places we don't usually go. And just, I don't know, because we can't keep doing the exact same things. We were on a, you know, decently upward trajectory, but like, I'm 31 and I really need health insurance. So, you know, <laughs> going to have to chop chop a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Ash just yeah. No, I, 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 Ash has to listen to me bitch about my my back or my arm. 
Yours was sending me to the same, literally the same thing. Yeah. Also, well, I yeah, just, you tore those ligaments. That was your fault, though. I'm just old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you just don't take care of, you know, yourself. You're always like, I am going to jump off the stage. <laughs> am I going to eat shit? The last yes? thing my parents said before I left was like, don't jump off things. <laughs> I can't, I can't resist. Yeah. Anyhow, so, sorry. No, that's cool. So, um... <laughs> It's so dark. Here. I don't want to mess with it. Ding, ding. Okay, cool. We're at, Okay. So we're, we're getting to like about 30 minutes or so. Uh, I don't want to keep you guys too, too long, I guess. We uh, love to how, ramble, how much sorry. time do you guys think you have? Oh, um, like, you can probably go like 15 more minutes. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess depending on okay. our merch setup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't want to No, you're impose. good. You're good. You're good. You're not imposing. Okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I wanted to just sort of talk about a couple of, like, bullshit things. <laughs> I love Because <laughs> I bullshit. feel like we, we, we talked a lot about the music and stuff, which is cool. Yeah. Um, oh, I didn't really... I wanted to ask about your singles, but I guess we sort of talked about that. A little bit, so. Yeah. It's fine. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> we, we'll speed <laughs> run it. We were worried that when Ash was going to be the new singer, that people were going to be like, oh, I, you know, I... It's a completely different thing. I really liked the record, and the record came out, and now I can't listen to the record, and blah, blah, blah. So we're like... Here you go. You want to know what it would be like if Ash was singing it? There you go. Yeah. And then we also put a new song on so that it was fair. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was going to say. It was two kind of remakes or covers, mm-hmm. I guess, right? Did you did you change anything else other than the vocals? Um, no, there's like a huge remixing process. That's Hansel, what I thought. It Hansel sounded... Romero uh, produced on it, and it was crazy different. Yeah. From Lee Diaz, right, in Valdosta, right? Yeah, so mm-hmm. Lee kept all of the stems. Um, God bless his heart. He keeps it all in a little uh, container. Guy. Yeah. And uh, he just sent them all to Hansel and he also keeps all the queens. So Hansel was like, Oh my God, I can reamp everything. And we just sat and talked about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then did the vocals and that was pretty much that. Yeah. Um, Where did the new song come from? Uh, it was so before the EP came out, we were like, okay, we're going to write an album. And we kept telling everyone on social media, we're writing LP2, we're writing LP2, we are writing LP2. And we were, we were, and that song was kind of like a workshop song that we had for LP2. And then all of a sudden we were like, oh, vinyl pressing is going to be like, mm. yeah, we're not going to have a vinyl out until like 2030, you know, <laughs> the yeah, way yeah. things are going. Um, so we were like, okay, well, let's just try to put something out since we did this change with me being the vocalist. <clears throat> and um, we did the two songs because then we were like, oh, do we want to do three songs? We're like, no, let's do the two songs. Let's try to do like a new song. Like, try to do like a whole new take of where guilt is trying to go. And we looked at the songs that we had for LP2 and the one that fit the vibe the best was Long Time Coming yeah. with uh, in windows and through mirrors. And um, it definitely helped with like an overarching story that we kind of made from there. Uh, so that was like where we came from that. Sorry, my voice is progressively going and going and going. No, it's good. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Rock. yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we, we sped around the music. Let's do the bullshit. I love bullshit. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, I saw Thursday. Uh, yeah, it's my favorite band. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I honestly didn't know much about Thursday at all until I read Dan Ozzy's book, Sellout, that came out last year. If you're familiar. Mm. I am familiar. I haven't read it. It's it's pretty cool. Reading's but hard when you're driving a car. I, I, I genuinely like, I, I guess I'm sort of like learning a lot about post-hardcore in the 2000s. And I wanted to ask, like, as somebody who's sort of new to Thursday, what's the deal with Thursday? <laughs> like, so, so uh, give me, a, like, a crash course okay. on Thursday. I was the expert. What's yeah. The deal? Uh, okay. I, so my experience, I exclusively listened to, like, Fueled by Ramen bands when mm-hmm. I was in, like, high school and stuff. And then there was this um, this magazine, I think it was AP, that, like, missed one of the deliveries to me. And I guess as a way of apologizing, sent me the backlogged magazine and a bandana from Epitaph and bring me the Horizons, uh, whatever the one with the girl with the guts coming out, and Thursday's um, Common Existence. And I hated the Bring Me record, but I fell in love with Thursday. And I was like, uh, my thing with music is like, at the t- in high school, my favorite band was Say Anything. And um, I... I didn't think of music as something that like represented me as a person until I heard vocalists who sounded like me as a person and also were like kind of imperfect with their vocals. And I think that's the big sell for me on them is like Jeff 
isn't a, a perfect, pristine vocalist and also can't get out of his own way and stop talking about politics, even though it's going to, you know, like, it, there's a reason My Chemical Romance and Thursday came from the same scene, but My Chem got commercially big because they make, like, I don't know, Girl, I Miss You eyeliner music, and Thursday is like, colonialism was bad. You know, like, there's a <laughs> massive fault there. But, like, I I mean, that's that's the sell for me. Is like, I'm just punky enough to where like politics is important for me but i'm also like a sad little skinny white kid and i'm like oh representation but that, yeah i don't know that that's the thing for me i i across all their records i feel like they're exploring and they're just doing the music to do i hate when it's like well the bands we do it for the love of the art not for the fans like no we're all trying to make money so we can survive out here but it does it feels like jeff is like a scene lifer and really just supports all the other New Jersey people and is willing to let his band just be what it needs to be. That's my take on Thursday. Cool thing. <laughs> it lines up with a lot of what I've read in uh, Sellout, so I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, Ash is over here like, that premium record was pretty good. It was. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever do that. I was about to interject a few times when you were slandering Bring Me and then being like, my chemical is this girl, I miss you, and, guy, and eyeliner music. You know what? I love They're also MCR. Western cowboy music, so just <laughs> yeah. get it right. Gerard Way is the like blueprint for my life because I also like doing comics. I have like I mm-hmm. went to do a master's program in comics, but like I wouldn't personally get fulfillment out of writing that music. I'm glad he does. Like no no slander on that. It's just uh, different goals. It's interesting. It's so weird how there's so many like punk kids that like comics um i feel like it's something yeah, I don't, I don't patrick know. from yeah. drug church does comics. yeah i was gonna say uh, that <laughs> uh, max bemis does comics like yeah i, I mean i think i mean this the punk to your... comics or comics to punk i i used to work line. at a comic book store and when we were playing fest that year i had people come in and they were like oh i'm going to fest and i was like this is so weird. It's like we are an hour like an hour and a half away from gainesville and you're telling me you're going to fest at the comic book store that i work at I mean, As you're picking up comic books. Punk rock is alternative music and comic books are alternative literature. Like, you can make a True. pop, I guess, quote-unquote comic. You can make things that, are, you know, are going to sell well. Like, I guess the sellout version is just doing, like, a big Superman comic book. But, like, co- the best, even even blockbuster superhero content is some sort of, like, philosophical or social commentary. And that's the same thing with records. So I, I feel like the pipeline makes complete sense. Like Jared Way being infatuated with Grant Morrison makes complete sense to me. I, I, so you used to work at a comic book shop? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what was that like? I, it was one of my favorite jobs because I got to just really be surrounded by the thing that I really like, like like kind of pop culture, nerd culture stuff. Um, <clears throat> but... It was interesting. I worked there by myself a lot. Like, I would just open the shop and stay there. A lot of people um, came in and were very curious about the statues of the very busty women. Uh, And some people would be very uh, interesting about their inquiries about said statues. But um, other than that, it was uh, really cool because, I don't know, I got to be, I liked comic books before I worked there. And having worked there, I was like, oh, like, I have a deeper understanding of the entire world of comic books and collecting them and selling them and uh, and reading them and the lore of everything. Am so, I allowed to do an interview question? Sure. Okay. I've never asked you this. <laughs> so, you know, for the viewers at home, Ash's dad was a comic book collector. Like, But, like, oh. and I've heard stories about him you know, putting it in sleeves and wearing the yeah. little gloves. Yeah, like, that kind of collector. Yeah. So, like, for me, my dad plays piano, and that's the reason I never learned piano, because I never wanted to feel like I was in competition, because, like, that's my dad, and he's better than me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I learned, like, every other instrument but that. So was it weird getting into comics for you, or did you avoid certain types of comics or elements of collector culture because of your dad? So it's, really it's cool yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, well, I, I just want to say that, like, I've never asked this question. I don't know. It's a great question. <laughs> well, I, um, 
I have had conversations about it with my dad about like the things I'm into and he's like you are just like me for real because he was like you are doing literally all the same things I was doing at my age at your age because like you know especially when I was like I want to tour and he was like what the hell is wrong with you like touring is like the grossest most unglamorous thing you could do in life and I was like I want to do it um <laughs> but when it came to like comic books and stuff I don't know I think it was a thing that I felt bonded to with my dad because yeah, of yeah. the special different type of relationship we had and um i think it definitely <laughs> he was like is it, you know music talking about music the music i was into he was like you're gonna grow out of it you're gonna you're gonna because like i had my metal phase or whatever and he was like and then i got into like real soulful like r&b and like gospel music too and he was like and you know he was uh he was a rapper he was an mc a producer and all that stuff and dj and so he's like, you're going to, you know, he's like, you're going to, you're going to find your way. And I was like, no, dad, I'm going to keep listening to Black Veil Brides. You can't tell me what to do. I'm a lifer. This is a commitment. I yeah. have a life. For and Rise, it is good. I literally was like, oh, he was absolutely right. Of course, I was going to just be like, music is, I like music. And I don't have like any like, er, X this genre. I used to be like, no country, but I have um, matured. <laughs> <laughs> so no country is good. So it was just kind of like, he was basically telling me yeah you're gonna do this thing i see it already happening and i'm like Psh, and then i did it anyways so no, that, that's cool that's yeah. a cool connection yeah it's awesome yeah well, i wanted to ask uh do you guys have any like i don't know sort of alternative or independent or more obscure comic book uh mm. suggestions there was one comic book I started to read while I was working at the store. Uh, Tyler, do you want to answer while I look it up? That's okay, because, like... Um, I mean, I, my answers are kind of normy. Like, my <laughs> my all-time favorite comic, like, if... It's like those quizzes, like, if, if somebody's going to get to know you in three books, like, what should they read? Like, um, it's Day Tripper. I don't know if you know it. It's, um... I, so, yeah, I found out, because, obviously, um, Fabio Moon, Gabriel Bod did the art for Umbrella Academy. I was a big MCR fan, you know, right. but, uh, <laughs> day tripper is not that it's, it's, it's so freaking emo. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a, it's a comic book about a guy who basically kind of lives in these parallel dimensions and he's an obituary writer and he dies different ways every time in every little universe. There's slight variations on the relationships that he has to people like his best friend and his ex and his family. And, uh, it's just absolutely heart wrenching, but for me, I really like n not like full cerebral thinky stuff, but stuff that like really lets me explore uh, emotions uh, and ideas about relationships and stuff. It's to me, it's it's like I guess uh, if a little bit thinkier emo band was a was a comic book. I guess like if like the Deer Hunter was a comic book, <laughs> that's kind of how I think of that. Um, it wasn't that it came out. I just we had a lot of it while I was working at the shop. It was grim fairy tales, mm -hmm. and uh, just very interesting series. A lot of people really liked because I was working there when deceased. It's like the DC universe is like a zombie outbreak happens um, for all the superheroes, and they're all getting infected. Um, that was like huge when I was working at the store. And was that um, after Marvel zombies, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> But DC apparently did it way better. Apparently, um, listen, I never got into Marvel Zombies, but I did get into DC a little bit. It was everywhere. Like people would come in on, on I think it was Wednesday when it was like the release day, or Tuesday was release day, Tuesday or Wednesday, I can't remember. Um, and they'd be like, "Where are the new DC comics?" And I was like, "We are sold out already." <laughs> um, but yeah, that was those are the two I would be. I was very into. Oh, you Good, good, good. All right. <laughs> my, my favorite comic artist is Ted McKeever. Um, just like absolute top tier as far as like the line work that I like. Um, his work is hit or miss as far as the content for me. Um, but like top tier is Eddie Current. Um, it's without ruining it. Uh, it's there's a lot of Christian allegory, but there's also uh, it, it's about like like mental unwellness. So yeah, Eddie Current by Ted McKeever um, or Plastic Forks by Ted McKeever. I've never been able to get into comics, so I kind of want to check these out. So yeah. I, if you ever come to my house, I <laughs> have like a, novels, an ancient but... bookcase, yeah. and I'll, I'll let you stuff. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Like, I read, like, Acropolis or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, a good, that's a really cool one. Um, I read, um, you know, the name of the smiley face, the, the 
Blue. Watchmen. 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 Watchmen is my favorite movie. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, like, yeah, it's fine. It's, it's okay to like popular things. Yeah. Popular things are popular for a reason. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, just, I, I have a bad thing. Like, I, I forgot what ju- drug church, like, the name drug church earlier today when I was doing my notes. I had to, like, look it up. I can see the, like, the cheer album cover. Yeah, yeah. But I can't think of the name. And, That's like, okay. I, did that with, I just did that with Watchmen. I don't know. Yeah, why. Like, I, no, I, I do that with tons of stuff. We, I don't, um, we have a lot of conversations about, like, people up until the point of, like, information technology being as accessible as it, as it is. Like, people probably only met, like, maybe at maximum like 800 people in their whole life you know maybe they read like 20 books in their whole life and maybe they heard like 10 bands like at this point young people are inundated with thousands and thousands of images and snippets of text and and people and it's like our ability to maintain that information is extremely limited and the expectation of constantly being able to just recall everything immediately is silly really hard yeah and it's it sucks as it's like it almost seems like you have to to be perceived as intelligent my um uh, i don't want to get too deep in this yeah. but my <laughs> my uh my dad was doing his doctoral go thesis your merch table. <laughs> yeah. um, my dad was doing his doctoral thesis on neuroscience and the way information technology affects things and uh for like absolute condensed version Every time you think a thought, it's reinforced. It's uh, like creating synapses. It's like water cutting down a canyon. It's always reinforcing itself. And uh, the way that we use information technology now is like before you'd have to go to the library and like find a book and memorize facts. And the task of going to the library was so arduous that memorizing the tasks was or memorizing the information was the goal. Whereas now information is so readily accessible, it's you it's having the ability to use the tools to find information quickly, even if it's something you looked up 10 minutes ago. It's better to be able to use technology to find information than it is to remember everything all the time. Yeah. So never feel bad. We have the science to prove that it is just different what we're doing now. Mm-hmm. You know a lot of things, Tyler. I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm not trying to say I'm a little dorky. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's cool. Like, uh, I'm also very too, depressed though, when I write music, so, and I'm cute. So. <laughs> I'm impressed, though. Um, but, uh, yeah, so there was two other things I wanted to ask. One... Sure. I saw Stormy Daniels tweeted that. Yo, Stormy Daniels is here, here tonight. <laughs> oh, we Daniels already saw here. her. We already saw yeah. her, yeah. Um, which is cool. So, what do y'all think about Stormy Daniels? I um, had so many like banter things that I just told the group chat so I could avoid saying it in real life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I was not in said group chat, but I think that um, Stormy. I I just I don't know too much, but I've heard her name before a lot. And uh, <laughs> I respect I, anybody who's willing to face the le- legal ramifications of breaking an NDA with the fucking president. <laughs> like, that's absolutely the most ballsy you could be. If this was any other country, she would have been disappeared, you know? So Protect her at all costs. Yeah, for, for real. Like, I don't know anything Probably about her, her um, uh, paranormal thing that she's doing now. I don't know much about that. And I honestly don't even know much about her pornographic work. But, like... I, I think she's super gutsy for what she did with Trump. She got a lot of clout for it. And she's a cool person. Yeah. She's just around, man. She's just around. I love that whole situation where she's like, we had sex. And he's like, no, we didn't. And also, you signed an agreement to not say that. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> love yeah, her. Verified. She, she's the best. She deserves yeah. so many good things. And the other thing I wanted to talk about is sort of the, the plans is the band now. I know you guys got a lot of touring plans. Anything else going on uh, in the future? Like I said, Ali joined the band and recorded some music. And that's all I'm technically allowed to say about that. But we, we are doing we, a lot of touring. We got some things coming up. We're doing a lot of touring that, in May. It was like last year we we were like, oh, should, when do we talk about this stuff? And now that this stuff is like almost happening, we're still like... When do we talk about this stuff? We have yeah. a, we have a technical of when we're supposed to announce what we're doing uh, at, at the end of this month. Mm-hmm. But so just to be clear, my goals with guilt have been very stair steppy. Year one, my goal was to go on tour, like from literally when we started, it was like go on tour, and we did. Um, yeah, Twenty seventeen, right? Yeah, um, it was like go on tour, and what was twenty eighteen? 
uh, Play Fest. Play Fest, dope. Which we did. The third year. And you've done it ever since, right? Yeah. The third year, the goal was to tour internationally. So we had one date in Mexico and one date in Canada, so that checked that box. Mm -hmm. Um, So the next logical step would be to tour off the continent. And I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying Guilt is currently working on my stair-step plan. Cool. (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's cool. I think it's interesting, the band, the, the direction you guys are going in. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what happens. It's just, it's weird. It's weird to see people like Nico go and like Billy go, and I'm glad they all have their own thing going on. Uh, what, what's Nico doing now? She's, uh, they've got their own solo project, right? Nico's, without getting too deep into it, Nico, Nico and I are still dating. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, uh, we've been together, this is like more than four years at this point. Um, but, uh, I thought so. I didn't realize. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Nico's thing was basically that, especially with COVID, but even before COVID, Nico has a lot of anxiety and they talk about it on stage a lot. But um, the anxiety got better at a point by touring, but then after a point of not doing it, it was so bad. And they're like, I just, I don't, you know, I don't feel comfortable doing that. And they released solo work and I, I love working with them on Community Towel, but um, they're going to college now and like pursuing working on the more kind of like businessy end of music like like marketing stuff um and i think community towel is mostly just like a portfolio piece which is i'm every day i'm just like can you please release more music i get to hear all the demos that nobody else gets to hear and i'm just like put it out now <laughs> <laughs> put it out. <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome and i know uh tilly's with uh home is where now? tilly's with home is where yeah i think they just announced that run with laura jane grace and other people who people are gonna get, get mad that i don't remember but like laura jane grace yeah yeah you know you know. yeah I, I saw that too and that's awesome home is where is very spread out so when they tour it has to be extremely strategic and i respect that yeah so i don't want to keep you guys much longer i appreciate you guys taking the time to talk with me course, I thank you it's very impromptu you asking you guys had a long time driving no, listen. No, and now you have to spend even more time in the van oh no no <laughs> i this is but, home <laughs> so I appreciate it. Excited to see the show. And uh yeah. I guess we can okay. say goodbye. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> Bye, you. Bye everyone. Have a good night. Read comic books. <laughs> yes, read comic books. All right. So just a closer here, um very meta right now. <laughs> Not good at my job. Uh hope you enjoyed the podcast. Thanks again for listening. If you want to uh, read more, hear more, uh, go check out orbitingpunk.substack.com or you can check me out on social media, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. Go check out Guilt. They're on all streaming platforms. They're also on social media. They do a pretty great job. They're also on TikTok. So go watch some of their TikToks. Good stuff. And uh, yeah, thanks again for listening. Really appreciate it. Uh, Hopefully we'll be having another podcast out soon and more on the newsletter side of things. I know I've been sort of slow putting out some stuff there. Uh, Apologies for that. Thank you for listening and have a wonderful day, I guess.